ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to present to you your hosts, Spencer and Laura Williams. Hey everyone, I'm Spencer. I'm Laura, and we're married with board games. The idyllic land of Impernia is under threat of annihilation by an army of sentinels, marching rock giants emerging from the infinite oceans. Now the only hope for Impernia lies within the four kings and their ability to reclaim their immortality by restoring power to their magical bloodstones. In Ascended Kings, you have been set with an ultimatum. Face each king in combat to the death, or let Impernia and all you hold dear fall. You and up to three other players take to the arena, prepare to decide the fate of all on the outcome of a single battle. Sounds pretty epic, right? But is the game as epic as it sounds? Let's take a look. Ascended Kings is a battle royal arena combat style game for two to four players. It was designed by Jason Allen with an art team consisting of Dylan Pierpont, Andrew Martin, and Anthony Benedetto. The game also has a companion graphic novel with a script written by Nick McCary and art by Renee Delise and Ray Dillon. Disclaimer, this review is based on a prototype we were sent, but we can't wait to see the finished product. Hopefully, when the Kickstarter is successful. In Ascended Kings, two to four players control kings locked in intense combat with each other. Your objective is to reunite all four bloodstones by slaying your opponents and then by claiming the Omega Stone. So, what's a bloodstone and what's the Omega Stone? Let's take a look. Here is everything that comes with Ascended Kings. First, I want to draw your attention to the character sheet. A really cool illustration of your Ascendant. Different areas that mean different things like the transmutations, your gemstone pool. A lot of that's not going to mean anything to you unless you know how to play the game. But it's very important, I promise. And then the blood crest over here. Everyone starts with one bloodstone. And the point of the game is to kill each other and take each other's bloodstones because you drop it when you die. And then when you acquire them, you fill up your blood crest with the bloodstones. And then once you do that, you have all four, and a mega stone appears. That's this really heavy, shiny stone here, and that's going to appear randomly on the board. And if you have all four bloodstones and you make your way to the mega stone, you win the game. The other options you have for kings to play as, or ascendants, first is the Karis Vara. I don't know if I'm pronouncing these names right, but I'm doing my very best. And then there's also... High King Apsu, he's the blue character, and then there are, the other characters are Haramer Elodin, and then Kahadrius Zahoth. Each character has two corresponding miniatures, and there's a reason why there are two. You start the game as an ascendant, so that's the king, and you can notice the detail on these, these miniatures. Now they're 3D printed so they're pretty fragile, and some of them have, have little pieces broken off, but it's going to be really neat to see what the finished product looks like. And so this is what you start the game as. But if you get killed, this figure is removed, and you come back as what's called a revenant. And it's the different looking figure. And on the other side of your character sheet is going to show the revenant state of your character, like this. Dire Revenant. So the other side of Kahadrius Zahoth is the Dire Revenant. And you'll notice some differences here. Now you're still going to keep track of the same kinds of things like the Bloodstones and your level and, and the Gemstones over here. But there are just some slight differences. Every character has a Revenant side and every character has a Revenant figure that you're going to play as if you get killed. You're going to keep track of your level with this round or crown, whatever word you want to use. It's really cool. It's metal. It's very, it's very tactile to be able to feel that. And it's really thematic to be able to use a crown to keep track of what level you are. You also have these gemstones over here. And you're going to use these to perform actions or keep track of different stats. And you acquire these in different ways. Um, but first I want to tell you what they are. The white is aria. And that means move. So you spend white gems to move around the board. One gem per square. The green is what is called Aegis, and these are, way, these are the way you defend. So if someone attacks you, you spend a green Aegis gem to block. 
and then the red are pyre, and this is the attack gems, and so you spend these to attack somebody. If you have to take a wound because you don't have enough defense, you're going to get these dire gemstones, you're going to put them down. If you ever get too many dire wounds, you will die, and that's when you'll come back. And then finally, the blue gemstones are called Ilum, and that's how you're going to perform special abilities, special mag magical abilities that are very, very powerful. So these are very important gemstones, the Ilum blue ones are. One way you can acquire gemstones is by rolling your focus dice. So notice they're different colors, they correspond to whatever color you are, and when you roll them, there's a chart based on your outcome is how many or of what kind of gemstones you will get. Also, your cards allow you to get gemstones. Now there are two parts to your cards. Up at the top, you get a free action, you can acquire gemstones. At the bottom is that special powerful ability I was talking to you about. You're going to spend some blue, the Ilum gemstones, to be able to do a special ability. For example, this one is switch places with an opponent up to three tiles away from you in one cardinal direction. So that's a really cool ability. There are two different decks, one for Ascendance and one for Revenants. The Omega Dial is going to keep track of your rounds. So for a two-player game, you're going to start at 20 rounds. For a three-player game, you're going to start at 15 rounds. And then for a four-player game, you're going to start at 10 rounds. And then over here is also an Event Dial that um, you're going to do different events based on what you turn this on. You're going to turn this based on this die that you're rolling. This die serves two purposes, to show you how many times you're going to turn that event dial, but also one of, our, one of the really cool things about this game is going to cause these firewalls to start moving in. So if you roll a three, you go to side three and you start moving that firewall in. So throughout the game, your play area is going to get smaller and smaller. You don't want to get anywhere near those firewalls because they're going to do damage to you. Percentile dice, you use these if you have to randomly place a gemstone on the board. So you'll roll those and it corresponds to a number on a space. And the last king standing die, if everybody else dies and you're the only one that has not died yet, you get to add this to your focus dice and it helps you roll better to get more gemstones. That's a basic overview of what you get and some different aspects to the game. We're not going to go too in-depth of how to play. Um, we just want to show you what the game comes with and what it's all used for. Well, let's start our talk with the components. Um, you know, with this being a prototype, we expected to see, you know, some just some basic mediocre stuff. But um, that is not what we were delivered. Right. Oh my goodness. This stuff's amazing. I mean, I would pay money for this version of the game, with the exception of the miniatures being very fragile, but that's just because they're 3D printed. But everything else, the cards, the, the player mats. Um, the miniatures. Well, yeah. I mean, um, wow, they're just so intricate. I mean, that's incredible. I, I haven't seen that much detail on anything before. Wow. Um, the gemstones are really cool. The, the the little rounds, the crowns. As I mentioned, they're they're everything. Everything's very tactile. Everything is is mm -hmm. nice to feel. I smile just because our daughter liked playing with the gemstones. She did. Uh, we didn't lose any, so that's good. But <laughs> uh, she did enjoy playing with the gemstones. Yeah, all, mm -hmm. all of the the. Well, and we liked handling them, putting them on our player mats. Mm -hmm and um, picking them up off the board. There's we just, liked handling those There's things. just something about the sound of it clicking down on the board or, or you know, putting it going in place. Uh, we really like that. And, and as we said, it's, we're going to be really excited to see what the finished product is like oh, because if it's man. anywhere close to this, you're definitely going to be getting your money's worth. Yes, definitely. And speaking of money's worth, the artwork. The artwork is fantastic. Wow. Um, this is definitely professional quality artwork. Oh, yes. And uh, we mentioned the design team. Um, kudos I mean, the to them. People who would want to cosplay these things are going to have their work cut out for them. Yes. These things. I'm sorry. These are kings. Um, <laughs> but I mean, wow. I mean, creating costumes based off of these would be a very good challenge for cosplayers. And we're really looking forward to the graphic novel with artwork by um, artists who have drawn for DC Comics for a Wonder Woman comic. 
um, just to have that caliber of art artists working on this project That's is really, really cool. Impressive. It's very, impressive. Right. Yeah. Very impressive. Um, so the artwork alone, along with component quality, is, is, an, is we think, enough reason to back this game. Mm -hmm. But really what it comes down to is the gameplay. Yes. Um, we've never really played a game that has a system like this with, with using gemstones to, to whether move or attack. And like, There very well could be games out there that use these constructs and whatnot, but we've never played them and so we were fascinated and intrigued by it. And Instead of rolling a die to see how much you move or how much attack you do, it's all based on your turns before, how many gemstones you acquire. So there's a lot of planning going on. Yes. And we thought that was very interesting. Um, it was, and it was really cool with the gameplay, nothing was predictable. Um, you think one person's gonna win or one person has the lead, but somebody else plays another card oh, that, yeah. that just comes out of nowhere. Yes. And they slam you. In our four player game. Right. Yeah, one player had three bloodstones and so many of the Aegis stones, which are defense against someone else's attack. And, um, Another player came and just wiped him out and got all three of those bloodstones. So then, ta-da! Here comes the Omega Stone. And she made it and she won. Yeah. And it was just, it was really cool to see that. It was that. like in one or... Two one, rounds. One, yeah. It was two rounds. Within two rounds, two rounds, she came out of nowhere to win. And, win. and and again, it all comes down to planning, you know, how how much you're going to upgrade getting to level three or, or getting right. those getting those mutations yeah. or, or your cards. Yeah, what are cards. you going to concentrate on? Right. Are you trying to build up your defense? Are you trying to build up your level? Are you trying to get your transmutations? What, what, which one are you, what's your strategy? Mm -hmm. It's it, very interesting. The gameplay is, is just, is so much fun. Yeah. Um, if we're going to talk about anything that might be sort of a stumbling block to new players, we would say that that's the terminology. Again, we discussed how this is a brand new mythos created almost simultaneously with the game. And so the Aegis, the the Pyre, the, all the different terms for Aria. the stone, Aria, um, all the different terms for the stones, the different terms for like, you know, the Omega Stone, the Omega Dial, might seem kind of overwhelming to anybody that's not familiar with, with learning new mythos and new stories like that. But once you get past that and really learn the basics of the game, um, there you, don't, you shouldn't have any problem. Oh yeah, it didn't take any time at all. Um... Our two-player game, yes, I would, at first my mind was kind of swimming. And then we introduced two more players in for another game session. And um, they, were the, they seemed the same way as me, mm -hmm. of just kind of going, what is this? I'm right. kind of, but it did, I mean, they caught, wow, they caught on so quick. And I mean, they're the ones that, that ended up doing better, better than, than us. us. Right. <laughs> and, but because of all those different words, those different terms, the different vocabulary, a story being created, it really creates a really cool theme of these yeah. kings battling on a battlefield. And when you're using these terms like, oh, you've been dealt pyre, not pyre, uh, dire wounds, um, it, it, it adds to the theme and, and I'm going to attack you with, with these pyre gems. Mm -hmm. um, it's really cool. I mean, I'll admit, it seems intimidating at first, but please, Please do not let that be a deterrent. I mean, if you get past that, if you'll look past that, you will not be disappointed. Right, and um, like I said, it's. De I would think that when you get past that and you do learn those terminology, it definitely adds to the theme of the game. Oh, so, yes. So a big thumbs up there. Um, we're gonna talk about some, some of the unique things to this game. As we mentioned, uh, the gems, using gems as your actions, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Acquiring those, whether it be um, taking a turn to decide which ones you want to acquire or using cards in your hands. Mm -hmm. You have to decide if you're going to use the top portion of the card that just automatically gives you some stones or are you going to use save it and do the bottom. Right. That kind of reminded me of Cosmic Encounter. Right, I see, what, I see what you're saying. two different mm -hmm. ways to use it. Well, technically three, because if it had a symbol on it, you could in, inscribe, inscribe it. Yeah. Another thing we thought was really cool are the firewalls. Yeah, that's so neat. Each round having your, your playing area shrink and shrink. And then I, I've got a love-hate relationship with the firewalls. I love <laughs> yeah. them because it's a cool concept. It's really neat. But... <laughs> Spencer's feeling the burn. Yeah. I, 
I got burned several times from the Man, fire. Man, in each game. Mm-hmm. Oh, I yeah. mean, he hangs Multiple out by times. the fire. It's, he might Unintentionally, as well be roasting marshmallows. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> so we love the firewalls. Uh, the no player elimination is really cool that yeah. if you die, you come back as a revenant. And then even if you die as a revenant, you just keep coming back, almost like spawning in a video game. Yes. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, and very good to, to not have to be eliminated from the game and then have to sit out and watch everybody else play. Mm-hmm. You mentioned, um, I don't know if you mentioned it, but on the, on the, at the beginning of your turn, you decide if you're going to be active or if you're going to be latent. And so, and when you're latent, that's when you acquire most of your right. friends. So you have to make that decision. Okay, this turn, am I going to be active? Do I want to do things? that really will benefit me by attacking or moving or do I want to if you even have gems to move right or do I need to sit out this turn and acquire cars that will help me acquire and gems, gems to and be able to do those actions the next turn right yeah. um, so that's a really cool cool decision to be made and then finally uh, another unique thing is I don't know many games that have a graphic novel to to talk nope. about their <laughs> their story, so that's really neat. So and, unique. And the idea that you'd be getting that with this Kickstarter is a really cool idea. Oh yeah. Um, so I'd say bottom line, Ascended Kings introduces new concepts and a new mythos to create a truly fascinating game. And to be honest, we almost passed on this game because the theme didn't really seem like something we are usually interested in, but we are so glad that we gave it a shot. If you are concerned about learning a brand new backstory just so you can enjoy the game, don't be. Ascended Kings doesn't require you to have any knowledge of what's going on in the mythos to be able to thoroughly enjoy the game. However, the team has worked hard to create an engrossing world that, by reading the graphic novel and becoming familiar with the story, will make your gameplay experience that much more thematic. Ascended Kings has so much going for it, like the components, artwork, and gameplay, that it would be a shame for it to not get funded on Kickstarter. Consider this review a full recommendation from us. Ascended Kings is a blast. So we're going to box this one up for now. If you have any questions about our thoughts on Ascended Kings or just want to reach out and say, hey, you can do that on Instagram or Twitter at MarriedWithBG or find our contact information on our website, MarriedWithBG.com. Thanks for watching and we're off to find out who's going to be the last king standing. Um, spoiler, it's me. I'm the king. No. It's me. No, me. Well, I guess we'll see, won't we? Yes, we will. Yes, we will.